For more on the push to extinguish smoking, I spoke with Matthew Myers, president of the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, and he gave me more suggestions for China to curb the habit. China's taken some important first steps, and you've seen the results of it. Um, Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen have all passed among the world's strongest laws prohibiting smoking indoors. Two years ago, the Chinese government curtailed the most egregious types of tobacco advertising and increased the price of cigarettes, but only modestly. As a direct result of those actions, for the first time in history, in the last two years, we've actually seen a modest but real decline in cigarette sales in China. It's hard to overstate the importance of that. Um, China has uh, over 30 percent of the world's daily smokers, um, 23 percent of the 6.4 million deaths from tobacco around the globe take place in China. So these are incredibly important steps, but they're only first steps, and that's what's really important to realize. China needs to protect all its citizens from secondhand smoke, not just in its major cities. It needs to do more to warn citizens. Um, the global standard today are cigarette packages with pictures of the health effects of smoking. China hasn't done that yet. And perhaps most importantly, it's incredibly important for China to raise the price of cigarettes. That's the most rapid way to decrease tobacco use among its citizens. Even as cigarette sales declined in China, um, overall revenue increased because the tobacco company, even in China, has the ability to increase price, in large part because cigarettes are addictive. So this is one of those situations where you can take strong policies, see declines that are gradual but meaningful, and still not hurt the economy of the tobacco-growing regions. We have some other countries like Brazil, other Latin American countries that have seen a better success rate in getting smokers to quit or their numbers have declined. What are they doing that nobody else is? And what are they doing that other countries can learn from? Brazil, which used to have a smoking rate close to 35 percent, um, has a nationwide law banning smoking indoors. It has among the strongest, most effective graphic warning labels. It has repeatedly increased the price of tobacco products, and it provides free um, tobacco cessation assistance to its citizens. As a result, it's seen smoking rates decline from over 34 percent to just about 15 percent. And most importantly, it has seen a decline in lung cancer rates among men, and soon we'll see it among women as well. Brazil is a real role model, and it's a perfect role model for China, because Brazil is the globe's largest exporter of tobacco leaf. So if Brazil can do it, China can as well. Would you say overall, globally, smoking rates are on the decline, or does it really depend on where you are in the world? Ten years ago, I would have told you smoking rates were declining in wealthy nations and rising in low- and middle-income nations. But this is a very important lesson. As a result of nations across the globe complying with the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, a treaty to which China is a party, we have seen globally smoking rates and cigarette sales go down, more in some places than other. But the most important lesson is that if you adopt the tobacco control policies in the treaty to which the China is a party, it is virtually guaranteed that it will see a decline in cigarette use, a decline in the diseases caused by cigarettes, and therefore a decline in the health care costs to China. Matthew Myers, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your insight. Thank you very much.